All right, you get the gist. Everything on screen is what the story contains. Please, if you are not fine with these things, well, anyone should not be fine with these. Please, don't listen to these. Or just, I don't know. Watch my other, cha watch my other shit. It's fun. It's entertaining. Hopefully. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and let's go. Unrelevant. Walking towards the exit of the Wisteria House was a woman within, wi with thinning pink and green hair. As the woman walked, she felt an underrating pain. A heavy thickness spread through her stomach, and her head spun like a, a, head, a light-headedness. She struggled as she walked, gripping her ab ab abandoned and dreadland nails. Nausea f fought as at the base of her throat, threatening to spill past her chapped lips. A rush of fungus shot through her, causing her to trip over her own feet. Using her other hand to prop herself on the wall, she took a deep breath. Mitsuri san, are you okay, dear? You don't look so good. An old woman ran over to the pillar, leaning heavily against the wall. She laid her, her wrink, wrinkled hands on the love pillars for, for to help stabilize her. Unable to hold her own weight any longer, Mitsuri fell to the ground. The old woman was not strong enough to comp completely support her form and fell to her knees beside the collapsed pillar. The last thing Mitsuri saw was the old woman's concerned face, a deep wrinkle in the middle of her thin brows. When the love pillar awoke, the first thing that greeted her was a tray filled with warm food. I'm going to say this name wrong, but Ormagimi and pancakes. Oh, you finally awake. Eat up, dear. The doctor said that you're very malnourished. When the last time you've eaten, do they not give you enough time to eat? Mitsuri was silent as she stared at the plate of food. Despite seeing her favorite foods right in front of her, she felt nauseous. The strong smell made her want to vomit. Are you going to eat? I know it's your favorite. The love pillar turned her head to the side, her thin hands covering her nose. I'm sorry, I don't have the appetite. Hey, that can't be true. You love to eat more than anyone I know. No need to hold back. You need some no nutrients. Res Resently, the love pillar re re oh my God, elated at the old woman placed a spoon full of food in her mouth. The food planned on her tongue. The warmth and thickness did nothing to spark her appetite. Just as she swallowed, a wave of nausea ran through the her and the food went down went down and came right back up. Seeing the slim oh my god, bim splash under the, the cloth, the old woman panicked and rushed to the front door. When she came back with towel, there was a familiar figure at the doorway. With a holding side, the insect pillar stepped into the room, gazing at her weak friend. She felt pity. Hel hello, Shinobu-san. Uh, sorry, I don't have the energy to probably greet you. What did you come here for? You're starving yourself now, Mitsuri-san. The insect pillar questioned Polly. Mitsuri flinched. She looked down as she, pl as she played with the fraying strands of the blanket resting upon her no that's not it i haven't gone the appetite recently i'm not just i'm not just not hungry F for now for how long has this been going on when was the last time you even ate shinobu's purple eyes were clearer th and seemingly un unchinant the love pillar began to sweat under her d un Intense, intense gaze. Um, I can't remember. I'm sure it wasn't that long ago. Can you tell me why you haven't had the appetite? Have you been feeling overly stressed? A familiar face flashed across her mind. The woman was smiling widely. Her odd-colored eyes twinkling in, in her hands was a plate of food. The figure laughed merely at the two, as the two ate. The woman faded away. In the depths of her thoughts, when Shinobu 
waved her hand across the love pillar's face, made Ziri feel a bang of longingness and nausea that de- decreased. He came back stronger tears welled up in her the woman's green eyes. I'm just not hungry. In the middle of the forest, the man in a black and white striped hoary sat peer- pierced on top of a tree, waiting, resting on his neck was a pure white snake, both set eyes observing this in a surrounding surroundings. Oh, a Hashira! A man, the man gazed down towards the base of a nearby tree, resting on a thin tree root protruding from the dirt was a white pot. Oh, we know him! And what seemingly appeared for out of nowhere, unfazed the demon's appearance, the pillar spoke without spoke through the white bandages, covering his mouth with a lax voice. I'm here to make a deal with you. A loud chuckling echoed throughout the forest, shaking the leaves on the branches. The pot shook at the demon's rumble. Suddenly, a cloud of smoke, a figure began to emerge from the pot. The demon was sickly gray, with a small arms protruding from his body. Mouths lined with rows of teeth were placed where his eyes should be in the middle of his forehead and held within the demon's quote-unquote mouth were two honey-brown orbs on these orbs were engraved at a familiar set of leather letters upper moon five oh she were making a deal with a demon what could you possibly want the demon's eyes moved as it talked the demon observed the Hashir's eyes hardened with determination. The new demon that your master is keeping? I want information about her. Irritated, the demon drifted closer to the man, perched on top of the tree. Hmm, and what will you give me in return? I'll tell you about the Hashiras and their skill sets. Oh, hoo, hoo. betraying your comrades for information about a silly demon? No, out of nowhere, it, a twisted blade pierced against the demon's neck the mouths on the demon's face widened into two large grits do we have a deal the hosher asked voice rough his green and yellow eyes glared darkly at the gray demon we have a deal then why did i do that for that the whole thing <laughs> a young man in green and black checkered hoary sat across-legged on a tatami mat of the wisteria household. With the moon just barely shining through the soji window, he pulled out a small leather journal from the side of his hoary, striking a match on the rough wood of the wall. He lit the candle to brighten the room, curiously filled with his, his being, oh my god, his being, as he gripped the leather in his between his coarsed hands. Before opening the pages, he brought the journal close to his face, pressing his nose against the leather. He breathed out before inhaling deeply. After not being near the phoenix pillar for so long, her barely noticeable scent left the slayer dizzy and in- intoxicated. Yin stayed in, his, in, in that position for a while. The candle nearly halfway melted before he finally p- pulled away. Within f- thick fingers, he spread he spread open the jur- journal. Red eyes darted back and forth as the slayer quickly scanned the pages. Without rest, he flipped over the yellowing p- pieces of paper, taking in, ta- take, uh, ta- talking in each character. Tanjiro continued to read before he realized to the last page, immediately recognizing the handwriting. His his focus intensified. November 30th, 1912. It was written a few days before the Phoenix Pillar went missing. It all must make sense now. I thought I made true friends. I thought that the people around me truly cared about me. Now I know that isn't the case. It's all effect of the curse. I have to admit, in the beginning, I was almost thankful. This curse was really a blessing, I thought. I have people who would do anything for me, just a single touch of mine, and they would be willing to throw their lives at the, on the line. 
That's when I realized how much of an influation I have on other people. It makes me guilty. How much of their lives have changed just because of my face They ha- that, happened to see- that they happen to see. I don't want her i don't want their love no not le- not love their infatuation their super connection is fake they don't love me they love my face it's not as if they even have a choice they are forced to ha- crave for me but the blood running through my veins i'm not going to be able to say this but hong yang bo yin beautiful women suffer unhappy unha- unhappy fate why should I? Why should one's appearance affect their happiness? Appearance shouldn't matter at all. Appearance can be false. They can be created. I wanted them to love me for myself. I wanted them to love me as I loved them. I fully believe that love they hold for me could un- undoubtedly change the moment the curse ends. Yet I don't care. This illusion love isn't meant for me to begin with no matter what i'll end this curse even if it destroys myself with it time for a taisho era secret ganya has five journals completely filled out each one of them about a certain phoenix pillar creepy right